Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're in the garage and going completely off what I've been doing on my channel for quite some time. Uh, I wanted to build a, a bathroom for my dog to use inside the house and I had the idea for almost I forgot for how long but I finally actually made the purchase and bought some wood from Home Depot and I'm gonna put it together and I'm gonna get, take you guys through the process of how to create it. It's very simple and cost effective. I think at the most you might end up spending is around, I say $85, not including the last piece that makes it a bit nicer and a bucket. So it all together it should come out around. Here where I made the mistake. I forgot to mention I will be building two of them. They are ones pre-made online that you can purchase. And they are three versions of them, if I recall correctly. Some of them even come with the fancy sprinklers. If you ended up buying the one without the fancy gizmos, you should be able to purchase one for $200. That does not include shipping and tax. For me, building two of them is cost effective as it will go up to $500 plus dollars. At the moment, I'm at $260 building two. And here I am right now disgusting. I will be repurposing the tray I have laying around. When using screws, uh, all you need to do is just use three for every joint. I ended up purchasing a three inch long screws. And it's very sturdy. They use, it's the similar screws they use to build walls around the houses. Around houses? <laughs> around the homes. Or should I say doing building constructions. You guys get the idea. It should be able to hold as much weight as it can. If it can hold the building, a dog should be okay. It's good to have a, a quick break. Merry Christmas, everybody. A dog. Get back to work. Since we went to Home Depot, this 27 and a half inches long two by eight, I measure as two by nine. We're gonna have to sand the edges, the ability to actually fit it in correctly. Or you're gonna end up pushing the wood. It might end up cracking it. Let's get to it. We have our safety gears right here. We're gonna actually need this. We're gonna be sanding. And I'm gonna take you guys through the process because I have no idea how much to cut so you guys get the idea. But I have my sander and it's connected to a shop bag as well.
that alone was more than enough as well as the other side I sand in both sides which is unnecessary you want to have it both opposite if this top my left is sanded you want to sand the bottom right unfortunately I did it wrong but you guys get the idea all right we have three to go because we build in two but you guys are only going to see one build. Here, I already had the wood pre-drilled. And I measured it as one inch from the top portion. And to get it to actually angle correctly and easier, uh, I just measured two inches from the other end. And then I draw a straight line. Uh, just it was just an easy measurement it doesn't have to be really difficult the other side of the panel is actually uh, three and a half inches lower and the slope is even greater by four and a half inches I only slope about an inch but considering the, uh, the wood is actually angled already it's more than enough for all the liquid to go to one direction also to make this a lot easier uh, if you have a lot of wood or something to support it from underneath, it makes it a bit more easier to be held in place by something while you're actually trying to screw it. And also, when you screw them, you have to keep in mind you <coughs> you have to keep in mind the wood is slightly angle, so you won't be able to screw the screw e uh, straight. You have to actually give it a little angle. Since it's slotted down to one side, you have to tilt the, the screw to screw while you're screwing it in. So it will be flush and there's nothing underneath the wood. And once that's done, uh, I need to make the measurement for the next part, which is the rear po portion of it. Uh, you can actually leave a flat, like one inch, and keep a flat level to the top portion, or you can do what I done. I put the replacement uh, case tray on, and I stood it up upright, and I just went right behind it with the ruler, and just marked it with a marker, and then I had a had many marks around it from the inner side. All right, to finalize this build, I'm going to be building a hole on the replacement cage tray. It's going to be right in the corner, but I'm just going to use a funnel. The same thing that you use to pour oil to your engines. And Hyperfight actually have a package you can buy and you get five of them. It comes in a package like this and it costs five dollars. I believe and they have extra small a small a medium and a large I'm gonna be using the medium this actually fit my need and I'm gonna actually have to angle it because the way I built uh, I don't know the way I built the P and area I guess I still don't have a name for it I'm gonna be angling this thing so I'm gonna have to cut it or sand it but I have a sander so I'm gonna be sanding it so for people out there you can just cut it but make sure it's actually smooth and use an epoxy. It'll be, it will bind it together to the plastic and it's gonna be permanent stay. This is 24 hours later and the epoxy is dry and for the final touches I'm gonna add fake grass 
when you walk into Home Depot, there's an aisle there that have all type of carpet and grass and artificial grass. But there's one in particular that have holes in it for pests to pee in. About three feet. It's 12 feet long, but only three feet. Unfortunately, if you ended up going that direction, it's $120. But I'm making two of them, so it's kind of working out for me. So if you're doing the same thing, so you just keep that in mind for that cost, unless you actually can get it somewhere else for cheaper. Anyway. This is a lot. Artificial grass. There's holes in them. In this portion right here, you have many options. Either you can staple it to the wood, and since uh, it will be stationary, it will not move, as I actually added a handle on the side of the, the peen area. So for me, if I stable it to the edge, it should be fine. But it makes it much more difficult to clean it later on. So for me, I might end up just zip tying it to the cage replacement tray. If you like this kind of content, subscribe and ring the bell. And don't forget to hit the thumb up. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. I'll be happy to respond to them. Take care, everyone. I'll see you on the next one.